Before we get into today's video, I just want to thank each and every one of you. Today I achieved something that I could only dream of as a child. It's been a long journey, but one with no regrets, as what we have built on this channel together for me is one of the best communities about. The scenes have been beautiful, and at 100,000 subscribers, we can finally say that we are officially gargantuan. Pre-season is underway and Arsenal are officially back, so in a behind closed doors game against Ipswich, let's break it down and discuss what exactly did we learn. What's the latest on the Lissandro Martinez saga from David Ornstein and will Arsenal make a new offer for Yuri Tielemans? Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14. Welcome back to your boys channel and there's a glowing smile on your boys face you guys know exactly why I've said thank you so many times and I'll say it one more time thank you for 100,000 subscribers and to thank you guys I will be doing a shirt giveaway of three Arsenal kits the home kit now it's out the away kit one that comes out and even the brand new Arsenal third kit there'll be further details on those giveaways coming very soon on this channel so smash a like if you enjoy the content subscribe if you are new because the road doesn't end here we keep moving and making Maybe, dare I say, 200,000 subscribers is a possibility, but into the Arsenal news and starting off with Arsenal versus Ipswich. Now, transfer news is amazing, but Arsenal coming back is the bigger topic today, as Arsenal made their first pre-season game of the brand new season, playing a game against Ipswich Town of League One behind closed doors at the Arsenal training ground. But what exactly did we learn from this game? We're well, looking into the lineups. The first half team was Burnt Leno, Bayerin, Ben White, Pablo Mari, Cedric Suarez, a return for Thomas Partey, Ainsley Maitland-Niles, Albert Samuel Conga, Nicola Pepe, Eddie Nketiah, and Reese Nelson. It looked to be Arteta playing that full 3-3 formation with Partey the anchor and the two number 8 of Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Albert Samuel Conga. But there's also quite a few players that I don't expect to be at Arsenal come the start of the season. The likes of Leno, Pepe, Maitland-Niles are players I think are definitely going to leave. And likewise the case for Hector Bellerin. But in this specific game, Hector Bellerin was the captain of the first half. He is the most senior Arsenal player so I'm ultimately not too surprised and to see him in the Arsenal colours, it's a bit weird. But but I fully expect him to leave before the end of the window, so let's keep an eye on it. The second thing that we have to talk about though, and the most important thing, was the man that was on fire, the brand new Arsenal number 14, Edward Nketiah, starting off with that shirt with a bang. As in this game, in the first half, he scored a hat-trick with three goals and also got an assist. Look, it is just a behind closed doors friendly, but with the number 14 shirt now on his back, this extra pressure and Arsenal fans expect more now to get four goals and assist on your first game with that shirt on isn't the worst to start and in terms of the game itself typical and get your goals the first goal is after 25 seconds a lovely finesse into the bottom right dare i say a bit like Thierry Henry but the second and third goal showcase the opportunist in the player scoring a tap in and understanding where to be in the right time but on top of an Enketia masterclass we also witnessed the return of the Ghanaian excellence of Thomas Teapate and one of the standout clips that have come from this game is this sublime you know reverse disguise past their party players for I believe the second or third Arsenal goal he sees the run from Eddie Enketia he finds him with his first touch breaks the Ipswich team down and Enketia is able to get an assist by laying it up for Albert Sambi Lokonga. And it is just great to see Partey back and hopefully he can remain fit going into the start of the season because of how important it is to have that number six in a full 3 3. There's not many players in Europe that Arsenal could sign that could replicate the quality of Partey when it comes to passing. But how excited are you guys to watch Thomas Partey in his brand new season? Another thing that we learned was Albert Sambi Lokonga playing as a number eight. There has been quite a debate in the Arsenal fan base of what is Sambi best position going forwards is he the long-term replacement for Partey as that number six or is he going to be a box-to-box -box number eight type of profile in the final third Sambi seems pretty composed he understands when to play passes and understands space as well not only did he score a goal but he did look pretty impressive but in terms of what we learned from the second half it was all about the Arsenal youngsters and it was quite a few the second half team had the likes of Okonko, Walters, Kirk, or Lino Sosa, Matt Smith, Salah Charlie Patino, Omari Hutchinson, Balogun and Marcelo Flores. 
Balogun was the fifth and final Arsenal goal scorer and it was a decent little finish. I think he hits the post first time round, but the second chance is there to wrap it up. But it was a lovely pass in the build up from the returning Matt Smith, who I have not seen for a very long time. The last I heard about this guy was his loan to Swindon Town and I think he was on loan last season, but in terms of any future at Arsenal, I don't quite know what's going to happen. But in this game, there was a lovely pass and we'll have to wait and see if we'll see more of Matt Smith during pre-season. The likes of Reese Nelson got a start, Nicola Pepe, but there was no sign of our brand new signing in Fabio Vieira. And the reason behind that is apparently Fabio Vieira is currently injured. In fact, he was recently seen with an Arsenal fan wearing a protective boot, which indicates he might have a foot injury. Fans are thinking that we're cursed. Every time we sign a player, he can't stay fit. But since then, the player has calmed down the fans, giving an update on its Instagram, saying, relax guys, it's just a precaution. I'm all okay and will be joining the Arsenal team for pre-season very soon. Arsenal of course now travel to Germany in their game against FC Nuremberg so potentially we might see Vieira on the bench for then and hopefully fit and available. Moving on to the latest transfer news. We all love transfers on this channel so let's get straight into this and we're going to start off with Lissandro Martinez, a player that Mikko Arteta has identified as a priority. He plays for Ajax and Arsenal have had multiple bids which have been rejected. But in the latest twist in the saga, it looks like Manchester United are looking to hijack. Yesterday, according to David Ornstein, Man United are now believed to be the favourites of the signing of Lissandro Martinez. Are Arsenal about to lose another one of their main targets? Well, in this specific report, it indicates that United are advancing negotiations, and I'm not surprised. Ajax is director of football is a certain Edward van der Sar, a person that, of course, is an ex United goalkeeper. The departure of Ten Hag, Donny van der Beek, United have established a good relationship with Ajax over the past few years, and it looks like they're also prepared to stump up the money. As according to Fabrizio Romano, United's official proposal for Lissandro Martinez is better than Arsenal's, but not enough yet. Arsenal are still there. United are also pushing to agree personal terms with Lissandro. Ten Hag is a key factor. Lissandro will ask Ajax to leave as he wants to move to the Premier League. A lot of Arsenal fans have actually already admitted defeat here and they believe the factor of Eric Ten Hag, the ex-manager of Lissandro, is the key thing here and there's no chance that Arsenal can attract him with Mikel Arteta. But according to Sky Sports News, although the pull of working again with Eric Ten Hag at Old Trafford is strong. Martinez sees both Arsenal and United as projects suiting his playing style and is also intrigued by working with Mikel Arteta. And this was echoed by Charles Watt, saying those close to the situation believe that Lissandro Martinez's connection with Ten Hag might give United an advantage over Arsenal, but insist that he is open to a move to Arsenal and that he is a big admirer of Arteta's ideas. Of course, Ten Hag is going to be a key factor, but I don't think it's as decisive as some people are making out to be. Let's compare this to Rafinha. Now, he's made his mind up. He wants to go to Barcelona and the key part behind and that is that has always been his priority. In the case of Martinez, his priority isn't to work with Ten Hag or to go to United or Arsenal. His priority is to play in the Premier League. But as things stand, United have made the better offer, meaning they are closer to acquiring his services. But Arsenal are set to react as according to David Ornstein, they have scheduled a new meeting with Ajax next week as the Martinez battle continues. Arsenal and Man United both think he's keen and personal terms are not an issue. If Ajax get what they want, the fixed fee of 50 million euros, the 24 year old must pick. Ten Hag is a key factor, but the race is still open. The price tag is set at 50 million euros and that price tag has got some Arsenal fans thinking of, is it worth spending that sort of money? Similar to the price like of Gabriel Jesus for a player that not everyone is sure is going to be a starter straight away at Arsenal Football Club. And very interestingly, according to David Ornstein, United see Lissandro as a centre-back while Arsenal see him as a left-back. Both clubs are pushing very hard for a signature. So Martinez for Arsenal is primarily going to be a left-back. I'm not surprised by that. I think Martinez is a profile that can be very suited to playing as the inverted left-back. Nothing is decided so far. United might be favourites, but Arsenal are still confident. This race is heating up. It's getting worrying and excited. It's squeaky bum time. What are your thoughts on the Martinez? saga and where do you think he is going to go? But keeping it on the left backs, Fabrizio Romano with an exclusive says 
that Brentford are set to sign Aaron Hickey on a permanent deal. The Scottish left back will sign for a fee of 14 million euros plus add-ons. It's a five-year deal. Aaron Hickey, a target of Arsenal, is not coming to the Emirates Stadium and in fact, according to Fabrizio, Arsenal have never made any real bid for Aaron Hickey. Lots of rumours but they just scouted him, nothing else. They are focused on different players and positions. Aaron Hickey is a player that just like Martinez and Zinchenko, another target of Arsenal, is a very versatile profile. The fact that he has that 5 star weak foot, left foot, right foot, he's able to play on both sides as a right back and a left back. He's definitely a player that Arsenal had genuine interest in but ultimately they never made a firm offer and the likes of Brentford West Ham have always attempted to sign him. Some fans will be disappointed, I myself think Arsenal are going for more experience and I'm not against that, I think the likes of Zinchenko or Martinez could give Arsenal a better fit for now going to next season. Moving on to the wide forwards and the race for Rafinha. Once upon a time, it was Arsenal that were advanced on negotiations and the favourites. Then Chelsea came flying in, agreed a deal with Leeds United, but with an RKO out of nowhere, in come FC Barcelona. And according to Gerard Romero, Barcelona have reached an agreement in principle for Rafinha. Romero has also claimed that he is 95% close to signing for Barcelona. Personal terms are not going to be an issue and the player has always made it a abundantly clear his priority is to go to Catalonia and it looks like he's gonna get his dream and for me it kind of lessens the blow because it says that even if Arsenal had matched Chelsea's offer the player was always gonna force a way to go to Barcelona and there's nothing Arsenal can do about that so ultimately it's a bit of an annoyance I would love to see the player at the Emirates I don't think this guy is irreplaceable in the market he's not an Mbappe or a Messi and I think there's other wide forwards that Arsenal can target and with the finances that are clearly available there are some very intriguing options on the market. But could one of those players be Cody Gakpo? Well, according to Ryan Taylor of The Express, Gakpo is another player that Arsenal will look at if they don't get Rafinha. He is a player they have made inquiries for before. According to quite a few reliable PSV sources as well, Arsenal have, like Gakpo, have genuine interest. The player himself is a Dutch international and scored so many goals in the ODVC last season. And the fact that he is more of a left-sided winger, it's more the profile that I want to see Arsenal sign over a more right-wing type of profile like Rafinha. Now, I'm not saying that Gakpo is the better player, but what are your own thoughts on the Dutch international? And if it came down to you, do you think Arsenal should be making a move? The update on Yuri Tielemans from Ben Jacobs is that still no formal offers have been made. Tielemans wants to join Arsenal and Edu is still in touch with his agent. Arsenal have agreed terms and worked on a deal for over a year but have never placed an official bid. The player wants to sign for Arsenal and the personal terms are agreed so all that Arsenal technically have to do is agree the terms with Leicester City but Arsenal's max they're willing to offer is around £25 million. If you are to go for reports, all that Leicester wants is around £30 million, so it's not that far apart, and part of me kind of wants to see Arsenal just pay the extra £5 million and sign the player. And I'm saying that because there's other teams that definitely have interest and they could also swoop in. In fact, Ben Jacobs also says that Eric Ten Hag is also interested and that Tielemans was also a target of Ralph Rangnick. That interest of my United for me, it might push Arsenal into making their first offer and hopefully wrapping up a deal. But Jacob Jacobs also claims there's a growing feeling that Newcastle could also enter the race for Tielemans. Their director Dan Ashworth has already made inquiries. Newcastle United have the money to spend and they could sign Tielemans but ultimately speaking, the player wants to move to Arsenal and that gives us the upper hand. Is this a case of Arsenal penny pinching and not paying the money but what do you guys want to see Arsenal do and with the interest of Newcastle and Manchester United, do you think it's time that Arsenal act and make their first offer for Yuri Tielemans? Moving on to the other Arsenal news today and starting off with the excellence of an Arsenal youngster, we have so many good ones and these guys, you know, it's part of their heritage to win trophies. And that is the case with Brooke Norton Cuffey, who we have to give a massive congrats winning the Euros under 19 with England. It is part of the DNA of Arsenal Football Club. Our players from young to experienced have to have their medals. We're not trying to be like other teams, you know, across the road. So point being, congrats to Brook Norton Coffey. He's a player that Mikel Arteta likes a lot, but is he ready for the first team, maybe in the Europa League? Will they keep or loan out Brook Norton Coffey? Gabriel Jesus with a number nine shirt is now available on the Arsenal Direct. 
this seemed to be a little bug and since then Arsenal have removed it but ultimately I'm a bit concerned now where exactly is the Gabriel Jesus announcement I set you guys a challenge a few days ago of could we hit 100k before Arsenal announced Gabriel Jesus but honestly I didn't expect that because I expected for Jesus to be announced by Friday this is just a typical case of Arsenal teasing the fan base making us wait even though the entire world has seen Jesus in the Arsenal colours it is what it is this is Arsenal Football Club and yeah I can't say I'm surprised but anyways that's the video there and there so hopefully you guys have enjoyed and if you have don't forget to smash a like and subscribe if you are new if you would like to follow your boy on all of my social medias then the links will be down below in the description but that was today's episode of the transfers FC and I've said this so many times and I'll keep on saying this a gargantuan thank you to you guys I can't thank you guys enough you have changed my life for the great for the good and we are building such a beautiful community here that I'm excited to see what's next because for me I'm only just getting warmed up and bigger things are around the corner hopefully very soon until then though take care of yourselves keep smiling have an amazing day and have it.